Uh, and finally, you've been speaking professionally for a few years now. So if you were to roll back the clock with all the things you know now, yeah. what advice would you give to young Jeff when he was first getting on stage? What would you say to him about speaking? Uh, I'll tell you what, I, uh, this is advice to anybody who wants to get into speaking. And, and that is this. And, and it's something people don't really realise. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a rock star, okay? So I used to stand in front of my mirror with a tennis racket. And I wanted to be a rock star more than anything in the world, you know? And, and I used to imagine that I was standing in front of Wembley with doing my power riff, and all, they'd be swinging their cigarette lighters, you know? You know the thing? 50,000 yeah. people going, Jeff, we love you, sort of thing. But then I spotted something. What I spotted was I wanted the destination. I wanted to be a rock star, but I wasn't, I wasn't up for the journey, right? I, I, I didn't want to play in pubs. I didn't want to travel in the back of a scabby old transit van. I didn't want to practice in somebody's garage. I didn't want to work for a five or a gig. I didn't want it. Now, I get people come around and say, oh, Jeff, you're the most popular business speaker in England. I have decided to be a business. I had somebody in my house. I gave him a cup of tea. He said, I'm going to be a business speaker like you. I'm not going to do more than two jobs a week because I think that's enough. And I'm not going to charge any less than 5,000 quid. He said, because that would be enough. To... And I said, how much speaking have you done? Well, I haven't done any yet, but you, it, you make it look easy. You know, fa famously, Picasso was sitting in a, in a pub and, and he was drawing on a serviette and then he screwed it up and threw it in the bin. And the woman said, can I have that serviette? And he said, of course you can, £6,000. And she said, what? It took you 20 seconds. And he said, no, it didn't. It took me 60 years, you know? And it's the same with me. I can make it look funny. I can make it look easy. But there's two things. One is that the journey for me has been a passion for business. Sometimes I'm up at three or four, four o'clock in the morning learning about Kaizen, learning about agility models, learning about Six Sigma manufacturing. How can you turn a boring manufacturing quality model like Six Sigma into a rib tickling funny story that the audience will understand and can implement? You know, don't just because you sailed around the world in a bin bag or dug yourself out of a shallow grave using only your teeth does not qualify you to inspire people. You know, we've, we've developed this thing. We, 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 we call it the, the lightning strike seminar. Because in research, people don't learn beyond 50 minutes. That's their limit. You know, if you go to learn to be a brain surgeon, you will be lectured for no more than 50 minutes to an hour. If you learn to drive a car, you have a one hour driving lesson, you know? So I think it's incumbent on any speaker to say, well, right, the client's paying a lot of money. Do I understand their business? Do I understand their message? Can I deliver a, a takeaway in 50 minutes that will move this client forward that offers value for the enormous fee that I'm getting? Because speakers, you know, that's my, my biggest failing is that I always feel embarrassed taking the money. I always think, my God, you know, how long would I have to work digging a road to earn this sort of money? Speakers are blessed, but you can't just wake up one morning and decide to be one. You know, there are thousands of them and thousands and thousands, but how many have got a deep knowledge of their subject and are passionate and have done the journey? I've spoken for free. I've spoken in the heart of rural Mexico. I've taken dangerous flights to, to Asia and talked to a room full of people who didn't understand what I was saying. You know, we've done it. I've done the journey. And do you know what? It's been the journey that's been the pleasure, not the destination. And when you see that rock star up there, he loved playing in that garage. He loved traveling in that transit. And that Wembley Stadium, hmm, Okay, that's the payoff, but you don't get Wembley if you've never been in the garage. Jeff, that is just wisdom personified. I love that answer. That was a masterclass for anybody wanting to speak. Thank you so much.
It's a pleasure. It's lovely to talk to you. And sorry about the naughty words. I know naughtier ones if you want, sir. All right, I'm swishing you off. <laughs>